I'm joking. I wanna take you. Uh, my name is Kevin Hart, a.k.a. K. Hart. Uh, profession, comedian, actor, writer, producer, self-made entertainer, whatever you want to call it, whatever title you want to put on it. Uh, I guess if we go into detail about myself, I'll give you guys a good interview. First and foremost, started here in Philadelphia. I've uh, been in Philadelphia pretty much all my life. After being in Philadelphia, at the age 18, decided to do comedy. At the age 18, did comedy, loved it, had a ball doing it, did a bunch of amateur nights, won them. After winning several amateur nights, I decided to take the career seriously. So I told my mom I wanted to do it for a living. But when I decided to do it for a living, they stopped the amateur nights. Pretty fucked up, but I couldn't do nothing about it. So my mom said, look, this is what you want to do. She'll take care of me. Mom took me under a wing, paid for a lot of stuff. I found a way to make money doing stand-up comedy. After making money doing stand-up comedy, I met a guy named Keith Robinson. For those people who don't know who Keith Robinson, Keith Robinson has crazy sexy Sundays here at Helium Nightclub. And uh, Keith is pretty much responsible for a lot of my success because Keith took me under his wing, which I needed. You know, I didn't know what I thought I needed to know about comedy. So Keith taught me everything I needed to know. You know, took me to the places I needed to go to. Uh, you know, made sure I was in the right position. Um, after being in the right position and listening to a good mentor, man, things kind of fell into place. I turned in just to, uh, not just comedy, you know, I decided to go into acting. And um, after going into acting, you know, things started to happen pretty fast. So at age 24, I was starting a movie, Paper Soldiers. And after Paper Soldiers, the rest just kind of fell into place. I went from um, Paper Soldiers to Soul Plane to Long Came Polly, Scary Movie 3, 4, In the Mix. Um, goodness gracious. 40 Year Old Virgin. I uh, had my own TV show on ABC, which I executive produced, wrote, and starred in. I mean, tons of stuff, you know what I mean? But more importantly, I held on to my comedian career. So after holding on to your comedian career, you realize what's important. And that's the people that supported you when you came up. So you stay true to them. And me doing that, hence, that's why I'm back here at Helium tonight. Keith asked me to come. Whatever Keith asks, I'll do. That's my A Spoon Coon. I owe him a lot. So in that respect, I support you. Um, Seeing a little white here. Thank you. Um, okay, so look, look here. We're having a conversation. Okay. Um, so you talk about being in the right position. Like when, like a lot of comedians, when they start, they have big visions of themselves. Uh, going right into acting. A lot of comedians don't really do the. Uh, you're very, you're much smarter than I am. I'll tell you what to do, watch this. You're smart. Clip it on the butt. There you go. There you go. Okay, perfect. All the white is back. Probably ain't gonna go nowhere. That's perfect. Um, so you talk about being in the right position. A lot of comedians get into stand-up to become actors. I mean, do you... Did you see that as your initial path? Uh, I mean, no. You you really don't. You don't know. You know. You can't. You can't predict your path. You only know what you want to do. But you don't know how you're going to get to your goal. You know. And uh, my goal, you know, came with a lot of me being in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, with Paper Soldiers, I was performing at a comedy club. Dame Jazz happened to be in the audience and thought I was funny and said, "Kev, I got a movie I want you to do." They say, "No, I'm doing a movie." You know. It's all about who you know and, and the position that you put yourself in. With Soul Plane, I knew the director. He allowed me to audition. I did a good job, and I wound up getting the part. You know, regardless of what people said about it, the movie did a lot for me. Showed people that I was talented on camera and, you know, allowed me to put myself in a different position in life. So I took it. I took the opportunity, and I ran with it. Now I moved on to bigger projects, bigger films. Fool's Gold, of course, which is out now. In theater, starring uh, Matthew McConaughey, Kate Hudson, myself. Uh, one called Superhero that comes out next month. Uh, one called Starship Dave with Eddie Murphy, Gabrielle Union, and myself. Uh, Not Easily Broken, Morris Chestnut, Taraji P. Hanson, myself. Going to do an hour special for Comedy Central. The things are good. No complaints from me, man. All right. Well, um, we're going to go back to Soul Plane in a second, but let's just talk in the, in the green room. You're telling your friend that 
you know, you're still trying to maintain your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You're not, you haven't gone on a superstar mm -hmm. entourage. Mm -hmm. uh, for what? It's, it's not who I am. If that was my personality, then I would do that. But unfortunately, it's not me. I'm pretty much a low-key guy. I go by myself. I don't need a bunch of people around. You know, I'm... What do you make of celebrities? Like, do they draw attention to you? I want to get back in a minute because we're going to really start. I know they probably started. Uh, you know what? If you put yourself in that area, then you'll become, you know, you'll get taken advantage of. If you keep yourself out of that area, nobody will mess with you. You don't see people messing with Samuel Jackson, Morgan Freeman. Uh, you know, you very rarely see Will Smith in the in the tabloids and the papers. It's all about the, the atmosphere that you create for yourself. So, you keep yourself around positive things, you're surrounding yourself with positive issues. Negativity won't follow you. You know what I mean? It's all about what you want. If that's the limelight that you want and that's the attention that you want, you'll get that attention by doing those things that attract that attention. I don't do those things. I understand. So, that's great. So, priority wise, I mean, what, where do you place things in the family? Families first. I got a wife, two kids. You know, of course, now I'm a grown man. So being a grown man, I got responsibilities, priorities, different things to take care of. And that's my main focus, you know, my career and, and providing. You know, there's a lot that I want out the business. But if things don't happen, I always got my family. So you make sure you put your family first. Everything goes underneath. Do you have a dream project right now? No, just working, man. I'm getting a lot of work, so I ain't complaining. I'm not complaining about nothing at all. They're messing with me. I'm booking, getting jobs. And unfortunately, when you get jobs and you're booking, it's a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. So, so no complaints. No, no, I love it. I love it. Um, so let's just talk about Soul Plane for a second. Because like, we promote African American film. The time it came out, it was like a split. Like half the people already saw it by the mm -hmm. time it came out. Mm -hmm. it Everybody saw it. Everybody saw the movie. Uh, I mean, the movie was the most heaviest bootleg movie in America at the time. But you know what? How do you get support, you get it. Unfortunately, it didn't do what it was supposed to do in the box office, but everybody saw it. Because of that, I go on the road and I sell out because of it. You know what I mean? So you got to find a positive in every negative. It depends on where where you are with things and, and, and how you take negativity. I don't think things are negative. So, I mean, it was obvious an opportunity for you to be seen. Mm -hmm. Like the script, did you have any reservations about uh, no, I mean, you know, it pretty much allowed me to bring myself to the movie, so I took advantage of it. Taking advantage of it is, you know, improv and doing what you can do. And, and Soul Plane was a bunch of people that was all over the place. Everybody's doing this and doing that. I had an opportunity to be the straight guy, but still be funny. So that's what I was asked to do, though. I did it. That's good. I'm, I'm just trying to get on. Did you see the spoof, the Soul Boat? No. Thing on the internet? No, that is it. This is a comedy truth on the internet. They, they theorize that originally it was going to be about the uh, Middle Passage. Mm -hmm. And by the time Hollywood got hold of it, they turned it into this sort of... I'm going to check it out. What is it? YouTube Soul Boat? Uh, it was uh, whatever the Time Warner's comedy channel was. This yeah, time. I'm going to check it out. I haven't seen it, though. I mean, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I love and respect you. I'm just trying to, like... Like, we, we criticize the movie heavily because of the stereotype. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can't make it's a not a, I mean, it's not a movie for, for criticizing. It's a spoof. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you, you, you're doing a movie with a purple plane. We're not trying to get a, an Oscar for the movie. We're not trying to get a big award for it. You know what I mean? It's a movie about stereotypes and awful things that happen with stereotypes. It's meant to be stupid. It's not supposed to make sense. So I feel like the, the criticizing the movie was uncalled for because you're taking something way too serious that should have been taken serious. You know what I mean? It's not a movie where we're trying to put black people on a map. It's a comedy. And that's the thing with comedies. You laugh. You get the stupidity of it. And you, you, you do it. You know, with Airplane, you then see people trashing Airplane. It was a movie with stupid stuff in it. But that's what spoofs are. But, I mean, we, we have, at this point, time, mm -hmm. very, there are very few shots for us to really have control over a movie and have it seen and everything. And then the movie travels, and once, once it is out in the ether, it's open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's like when the movie, tra I think Chris Tucker is one of those people that saw how his image was being interpreted dude that's farmers. stuff that's stuff that you can't control that's i mean that's overthinking the business you know what i mean like even when you think you have control you don't have control 
at the end of the day, if you got a deal and you produce your own things, you're going to the studio for distribution. So even when you have control, you don't have control. I don't care who you are, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're, um, uh, what's the guy's name, Bobby Johnson or uh, that was in charge of BET, that's about the only guy that, that pretty much, you know, had control. He's in charge of his own decisions. So whatever he's putting out, you know, he can say, this is something that I felt it would be positive and this is what I wanted to be pursued and displayed. But with things like that, it's not that serious, man. You know, at the end of the day, black people are too hard on black people. You gotta understand if a black actors, they don't get a lot of opportunities. So the opportunities they get, don't beat them down because you guys aren't the guys giving them work. So when you see people like Spike Lee and other people that were trashing people, then get the people that you feel like are doing bad decisions, give them more positive things to work with. If you're not doing that, then don't display people, you know, don't put people on blast when they're trying to provide for themselves. It's hard in LA for a lot of people. And I mean, yeah, right now I'm blessed. I'm able to make money and, you know, support myself, but, you know, Everybody's not doing the same thing. So when you see people doing movies called uh, Shuffle and Watermelon Seeds and stuff like that, it's not because they want to. That's their options right now. They're trying to start somewhere and get to some place, and that's what I feel like people don't understand. Right. And you had the opportunity very early on to do the TV show. I mean, what was that? I mean, obviously, a lot of uh, going around. TV show loosely based on my family. I say loosely so they can't get no money from me. But uh, nah, I mean, it was a. It was once again opportunity that I had and I had a chance to, you know, to pitch something. People loved it. Took advantage of it. Came at a bad time with the network. It got canceled. But I did what a lot of people have never done. So I took advantage of it. I love the opportunity. I'm not mad that the show got canceled. It made me a smarter man because of it. And now I understand the business. So things that I've done after that, I have a different understanding for the business. I appreciate the business. So, so, all right. So future-wise, I mean, do you see yourself when you have the power, you know, to produce or direct or write again, or do you? I mean, I will. Right now, things are going well without me having to bring stuff to the table. Right now, people are looking for me, which is good. So, when that stops, then it's time to get creative. Right now, I ride this wave. Wait a second, see how big things get. They could get bigger to where I don't have to. People might bring projects to me. So, if there is a soul plane too, would you? Uh, at this point, I don't have to do it. You know, things have gotten bigger and you know better, so I don't have to go and, and backtrack. So right now, I'm moved on. I'm doing other things, more mainstream movies, trying to get to a more mainstream level. That's pretty much where I'm at. I, I, I'm perfectly. So let me just go over my notes real quick. Um, you need a shout out to. Oh, um, if you look right into the camera, give your name and say you're watching Real Black. What's going on? This is Kevin Hart, a.k.a. K. Hart. Right now, you watch it real black. So if you ain't black, I guess you ain't real. You gotta be black to watch it. It's pretty racist, if you ask me. I still support it. Okay. Yeah, like two minutes left. Can you just talk about growing up in Philly? Growing up in Philly, a blessing. Love my city. Always will. There's nothing else that comes before Philadelphia. That's why I come back. Born and raised. I appreciate it. Appreciate the people that appreciate me. In a nutshell, it's hard to kind of describe people that you know, that you have a genuine love for. So even though we go through our shit down here, it's what happens in any city. It's not just Philadelphia. A lot of people are doing the same things they're doing here. But, you know, we get put on blast for it. Love it, support it. Peace. Shouts out to Siegel, the rest of my Philadelphia family that's trying to do big things. All right? Okay, and just the last part, right? Just the state, state of black comedy as it relates to state of black film. I mean, you have a any strong opinion on it? Uh, state of black comedy is a state of black comedy. There's no, you know, I don't feel like there's a section or there's an era for it, you know? Comedy is what we love, you know what I'm saying? And with a lot of African Americans, this is a good way for us to get in. So support it. When you see comedians coming up, whether they're struggling or not, support it. It's not an easy task. It's not an easy profession. So when people take that profession on, genuinely love it, genuinely try and appreciate it, because this is a way for us to maintain. This is a way for us to get out of a difficult situation. Same things with black films. Don't be so hard on them, man. People are just trying. But I feel like we're so hard on our own people. And I feel like the other side isn't as hard. So try to even it out, man. Realize people just hustling. That's all. Yeah, I'm, and I'm not trying to make you defensive. I mean, that's no, no, not, you're good. That's not the intent. No, at no, all. you're good. I just, I just make sure I explain I just, that. That's I, all. It just seems like, this is, this is from my perspective, honestly, is like there's so many talented guys like you. And you got, you know, people that don't quite understand making those decisions, what people mm -hmm. make. You know, so stand up comedian, the stage, everything is in your control. 100%. Pretty much. And then when you have to collaborate in the film, you, you, you have don't to have the same design. control. Exactly. You don't have the same control. You gotta find that mix, man. Just find that fine line. Ride the line. Either way, continue to support me. I'll support you. Watch my movies. Don't bootleg them no more, though. We did that already. 
We passed that. So support them. Go see Fools Go in theaters now, man. Y'all be real. Good shit. I was black in that. I was pretty good in that. Let me get inside. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it was good. I wouldn't. No, everything you said was good. Okay,